What's up, guys? We're back. Weekend recap. I know we've been gone a little while. Drew Bloggs in the house. Bo Bassett are on the way home from grade school states. This uh, episode, again, brought to you by Cauliflower Combat. Go check those guys out. Make sure you use code Drew Bloggs, all one word. Get you 10% off your next purchase. I think they're even doing free shipping right now. So let's let's just jump right into it, man. How have you been? It's been a couple of weeks since we last talked. Uh, let's you know kind of recap what what you've gone over the last couple of weeks, and we'll go over what I've gone gotten into over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So uh, for me, I've just been doing a lot of a lot of training. Um, I think we have the best room in the world, so I've been getting a lot of really good training in at home and, and a lot of good grinding practices uh, that that we needed. And as far as what I've been doing on the weekends, I, I was at the NCAAs, which was awesome, uh, crazy experience. And that was just a super awesome weekend overall. And then this weekend I was at Kid States and I went to the Dapper Dan and all of that. So it's just been, a, you know, some awesome couple last weeks. And again, a lot of really good training going into this freestyle season. Ohio, beat the whippy old baby. Let's go. I saw that. Yeah. You guys got it done and, and uh, close duel and it, it seemed pretty fun. So. Well, the Dapper Dan, I mean, that's always – that's a that's a classic, man. The Pittsburgh Classic's always been a really good event. I uh, I never competed in it, but I know a lot of the guys from Maslin Perry, like my buddy Sam White, he competed in it years ago. And they just always have good competition there right here at the end of the year. It's always It always seems to be at the same time, though, as uh, NHSCA, Virginia Beach National. So it's, it's tough because, you know, there's so much good competition over there in Virginia. And then you got good competition over there in, in Pittsburgh too, so it, it, it's hard to choose what you want to watch. So, but you know what were what were sure. you know, what was it like? What was it like at Big Tens? You know, g- give us give us the rundown for you. What was it like at Big Tens first of all, and and what was it like for you being a fan? Obviously, you're going to be wrestling at that level here sooner than later. But what was it like for you watching a guy like Spencer? You know, take a tough loss like that in the semifinal. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you right. can can kind of relate to some of some of the the things that maybe he was going through because there have been times where you've taken a loss where pe- the people are cheering, the people like I think people just get excited to see the best guys lose. Maybe it's not that they want to see him lose, but they just want to see good competition. But then there are the people that do want to see a guy like Spencer lose, and then when you know, you know, his mom, his mom's heartbroken, and of course she, you know, she probably didn't maybe do the best, you know, look the best on national television, but how is she supposed to act? The cameras are on her, you know, so that's a rough moment. Give me your perspective yeah. on, on what, on what you thought went down and how you can kind of, how you can relate to that. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess, first of all, you know, with Spencer, obviously it sucks, right? You're going for your fourth, you lose, but I'm just glad that he came back. He made sure to come back, stand on the podium and everything like that, you know, cause I know that took some, that took a lot. You know, it took something deep down to come back. So I know a lot of guys would have just been like, I'm out. You know, the whole arena kind of turned on them when they went crazy. And you can't blame them for cheering because, you know, they're just cheering for the underdog at that point. But, you know, I think that it was good for him to come back. And I think he earned a lot of respect by doing that. And, uh, you know, I feel like my family and then, like, the Iowa crew was the only people not going crazy in that whole arena just because I fell for him. And I've, I've known him a long time. And, you know, it definitely sucks. But. You know, I'm sure he's going to definitely get revenge and some, you know, in his oh. international career coming up and what he's going to do on the world Olympic scene. So I'm excited for that. But as far as the NCAAs overall, I mean, it was just amazing. You know, you, you look at that semis and blood round. I mean, I, I would have went to just that. That that was worth the price of admission right there for the whole weekend. That that round is by far the best. And that wrestling was just absolutely crazy. So, yeah, there's there's nothing else like that in the world. And I think. Uh, like you said, you know, you felt for him. Jess and I, we went out to, uh, we went out to dinner because it was St. Patty's day and she, we wanted to get corned beef. And so we're sitting there, we're watching and she, you know, just, just a couple of weeks prior, she had gotten her picture taken with Spencer because she's like the ultimate Spencer Lee fan. So I got a picture with her and Spencer and she's sitting there like, like our jaws dropped. Like we were kind of like, Oh my God, like I feel horrible for Spencer right now. But at the same time, I'm I'm excited for Matt Matt you know Ramos too because I I've been there I've been an underdog before too and, and I I feel how he feels too because that kid's a dangerous wrestler he never counts himself out of a match he he's he's dangerous he's super dangerous and he he believed in himself and that's all that it took was him not really be keeping the match close enough that he could he could pull that off there in the end so 
hats off to Matt Ramos there. Um, that was, that was super cool to see. And, you know, like you said, there's no other environment like the NCAAs, the blood rounds, the semis, um, because I can relate. I was, Jess and I had the, the, you know, opportunity, um, to take our, our media company, to the big 10 tournament, we got credentialed at the big 10 tournament, which I would have never dreamed of after, you know, this is, this is just the start of year two for Drew Bloggs media. And for us to get credentialed at the NCAA tournament or excuse me, big tens was, was amazing, man. Like it, it, we were sitting right there. Uh, she got some really good pictures of the boys. Like Alex Facundo reached out to us. Uh, she sent him over a bunch of pictures of his, he loved them. Uh, Nelson Brands reached out. Uh, all of those guys that reached out, I actually sent them over some Drew Blog shirts, like uh, Jackson Turley. Um, got to meet some 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 cool some cool dudes that I you know I've just been following, watching, and covering their wrestling. I didn't even know that they they paid attention to anything that I wrote, which was super cool. So I thought that was neat, able to interact with those guys. Got some really good interviews. Uh, and, and the sole fact that um, AJ Eds, the director of the Big Ten Network, actually went up to Jess and then he emailed her the following week later um, saying that he loved our, her, her work. He thought she hustled and he wants us to come cover more Big Ten events. So I'm I'm like ecstatic right now, man. We're kind of on cloud nine. We're just continuing to build this brand um, and, and take Drew blogs. And now she, she, she even has her own Twitter handle, Jess blogs. Now we're just trying to, just trying to grow, man, try and cover the best events. I think next on our list is either uh final X. Uh, I'll be covering uh, Vegas. I'll be out in Vegas coaching my guys for, uh, for Spire Academy, but I'm going to be doing some content out in Vegas as well for uh, the U S open, but it, it's just been amazing, man. That, and that's why I know, uh, I was glad we were able to connect tonight because I know both of us have had so, so much going on. I just kind of wanted to sit down for a minute and go over everything. And, um, you know, for, for those that don't know, Bo, I think we can finally talk about this now. Bo is now a member of Team Rudis. I think maybe we saw that coming. We, you know, we, I think people may have saw it coming, maybe not. But congratulations to you, Bo. That's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> That's another NIL checked off the list. Uh, what is that, number four or five now? Uh, I believe it's number five. How, how, does, how, how did that come about? Like, how did you, did you know that was coming? Or is that something that you, was that a dream of yours? Or is that just something that you're like, hey, that we got to make this happen? No, yeah, that was a dream of mine for sure. Seeing so, you know, all my, my role models and, and guys I look up to with those. And, you know, it, it came about, the opportunity presented itself. They wanted something. Uh, that, that I offered, and, and obviously I wanted what they offered, and uh, yeah, we got it done, and, and I'm really excited, man. That's an organization that does every single thing right. They don't skip any any corners. They're they're doing everything right, and uh, this is a slower process, but we ended up finally getting it done, and just so excited, and uh, excited for the future with them. I think we, I think we, I think you cut out, I think you cut out there for a second. Can you hear me clear? All right. Yeah, I got you. All right. So uh, I don't know if you, if you want to just re, re go over the, the, the rudest topic. Like I know you, yeah, you yeah. got to like where you said where you like, it was a dream of yours. So if you just, so uh, Bo kind of cut out for a second, guys, Bo, Bo did get signed by Rudis. This is his fifth NIL. So he's just going to uh, kind of go over again, what, what he just had said uh, without, you know, as much, uh, cutting out as possible so sorry about that guys <laughs> yeah right no i just said that you know this is something that i've always dreamed of and um you know they presented something that i that i've really liked and obviously i had what they wanted and uh it was a slower process to get the deal done but you know, we ended up getting it done and i'm just super thankful and grateful and just excited for the future with them yeah i mean that's a huge that's a huge company they are they're leading the way with uh with the shoe the shoe game and that's for sure uh, you know, can't, can't forget about, you know, Rudis there, man. They, they, they've done a great job at promoting the sport. I think, I think those legacy jackets are pretty sweet and I, I I'm super yeah. excited for you, man. I'm super excited to see what the future holds for you with Rudis. Uh, I was hoping we were going to get you on team cauliflower, but we already got a couple of your teammates. So I think, I think everybody is evenly, evenly set across the board. So, uh, 
we may be competitors, but you know, you're, you're still my boy. So, uh, yeah. congratulations on that, man. That, that is, that is an amazing feat. You're just a high school. I think you're the only high schooler, if I'm not mistaken, that's, that's sponsored by Rudis. So, right. Right. Yeah. The first one. So I'm excited about that. And that organization does everything right. Every single thing. They're not ever going to skip a corner or, or anything like that. And, you know, I just appreciate everything you've done for me. Absolutely, man. And, and, and it's, it's so cool to see someone like, you know, that like you, you're, you're posting all these videos. Um, do you ever get tired of doing any of these, you know, these, these, these Sunday circuits, the technique Tuesday is and, and today you didn't have to be at, you know, youth state, but is this, is this part of you branding yourself and making your face, showing your face to the youth and giving back because of what was given to you? Or is this just something that you want to do? Yeah, well, I think it's a mixture of three things. It's what I love to do for one, right? This is what I love to do, so I'm just going to keep doing it. And then, I mean, for two, it, it's definitely to build my brand, right? I want to get my name out there. I want to be known, and I just want to, you know, again, just build that brand and, and get out there. And then, I mean, for three, I know that my role models and, and people that I always looked up to gave back to me. They did this stuff to me. They were super cool with me. And so I want to do that for other kids, and I want to be that person for other people. And so to be at the state tournament today, I mean, it was a no brainer. When my dad asked if I wanted to go, like it was on, we were going and, and I'm just trying to get back and, and just give some wisdom down to little kids and, you know, just be the, be the role model that I have. Absolutely, man. That's super cool that you're able to, you know, you're, 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 you're pulled so many different directions and, and you do such a fine job of doing it, man. I can't reiterate that enough, but I also want to get into uh, a little bit. So this was grade school, but middle school was just a couple weeks ago. And your brother Keegan had a tight match in the finals, but he was able to yes. get it done. Uh, your dad was sending me videos. Uh, the place was going nuts because one, it's Keegan Bassett and everybody wants to beat the Bassett's. And you know what? He got it done, dude. The pressure was on That's him right. and he got it done. I couldn't be more proud of Keegan. That, so congratulations, Keegan. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, man, that was unreal. And, you know, it, it taught a lot of us a lesson. We talked about it in practice for like a whole week, there was two seconds left and he's down two. I'm sorry, like four seconds left. And he's down two or whatever, six seconds and um, down two and he has to get a takedown. And that's just a force overtime. And I knew there was a small percent chance he, he could do it, but I knew he could do it. I knew what he had and he went after it and he got the takedown and then he was right back on the line and got it in overtime. And, and yeah, we were, we were fired up for him and that just shows you never give up. And if there's time on the clock, there's a chance for you to win. So it was a good lesson. I think that's so important for so many kids to learn there where you said there's still time on the clock. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, some, some guys, yeah, it definitely matters. Stylistically, some guys are down by five points. They're, they're not coming back in the match just because of the way they wrestle. They don't have, some guys don't have that, the, da the dangerous throws, or maybe they don't have um, the feet to back move that, that some of the, you got, you always got to have that in the back pocket. And or just like the resiliency that your that your little brother showed, he you know right. he was probably tired. I can only imagine that he was probably tired, but he was the first one back, put the toe on the line, and he got it done. So congrats to right. Keegan, high state champion, um, and 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 the success is just going to continue to carry forward as long as he continues to put forth that you know that machine gun mindset, as you guys like to say over there at McCourt. I love it. That's one of my favorite right. things that you guys got. Um, right. You know, and I also wanted to say, th dude, thanks for the singlets. I had no idea you guys were shipping us singlets. Jess, your dad had sent like a friend request to Jess and then me and she goes, I swear to God, I hope Bill doesn't ruin the surprise. And I was like, what, what surprise are you even talking about? And then the next <laughs> day, the mail, the mail came and I opened it up. And I'm like, are the wrestling singlets? So we're going to we're going to get those framed. We're going to get the, those hung up on the office wall back here. So thanks, dude. I'm super stoked. Those are sweet. Yeah. We can make we can make them really you know or something and and uh, those be cool someday. So absolutely, man. Those are those are sick because I mean not not everybody's got a Bassett singlet and you know I, I'm I would like to have a collection of uh, superstars hung around in in the man cave here one day. That would be <laughs> sweet. So yes, sir. Uh, what is uh yeah. how many guys how many guys did you guys have competing at NHA NHSCA this weekend? Did you guys have anybody or is is everybody just in freestyle mode right now? Yeah, we had a couple guys competing this weekend, but pretty much everyone's in freestyle mode. Um and 
again, we're getting after it in practice. We're having good practices just like we be competing. And uh, we're really ramping it up and, and really starting to get ready uh, for this meeting. But we have to pass. And so, and then that's awesome. He's, he's a guy who's really coming along and starting to make it for himself. So I'm really proud. That's that's awesome, man. And then I was talking to your dad. We were supposed to come out to a practice on Friday or Saturday. It was Saturday morning, but unfortunately, uh, Harper Harper came down with a little bit of a, you know, she she gets these uh, frequent ear infections and they kind of drive her crazy. So we weren't able to make it out. But your dad was saying next weekend you guys are in Atlanta. What is it? The Elite Eight Duels yes, or something like that? Yeah, Elite Eight Duels. There's a lot of really talented guys in my weight, and I'm really excited for it. And uh, it's gonna be fun. First freestyle competition of the whole year. So, oh, so it is freestyle. This is this is freestyle. And then, and then, what dual team will you be representing there? Yeah, I, I'm on Dynasty. I, all the teams in this event are pretty much all made up uh, from around the country. And like I said, I'm gonna have some really tough guys. And I'm sure the rosters will be coming out here soon. But uh, it's gonna be fun. There'll be hopefully some good matches, and uh, I'm excited for the challenge. That's super cool, man. And you know, for those of you that you know, we're wondering if this was folk style or freestyle. You heard it there. It's going to be freestyle. And then from there, I think, I think we're going to come out the week uh, that you guys get back from uh, Atlanta. Jess and I are going to get a hotel. We're going to come film some practices for you guys uh, during the week or during the uh, end of the week. Um, so I can't wait for that. I'm super, super excited. Uh, we didn't realize, I don't think we also didn't realize that you guys are like four hours away from us. I thought we were a little bit closer, but it's still doable. I, we drive six hours to Cincinnati, so four hours is nothing for us. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, closer, and that's awesome. Can't wait till you guys come out. Uh, the week after, I think we have, like, our qualifier that weekend, so it would be a perfect week to come out and, and get some film. Yeah, absolutely. And you are you guys You guys are going to go to Vegas, right? You're going to be out there for U-17s? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, we'll be in Vegas. That's what we're getting ready for. That's the – I guess that's the Super Bowl of this year, and uh, – you know, we're really ready and excited for it. It's the Super Bowl of our freestyle season, and we're going all in. Well, you know what? It's It so happens that I I got a uh, I got my plane ticket paid for, and I got my room. I got my own room. We're good to go. Spire Academy is sending a group out to Vegas, and I couldn't be more excited to check out the U.S. Open. Uh, this will be my first time in Vegas, actually, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna, I'm excited to get the content. Not only the content, um, there's gonna be a lot of recruiting going on there for us because, you know, as of right now, you know, we're building a team at Spire Academy. Uh, we've got a few commits uh, so far, so we got a team. We're we're working on building this team. We got a couple ladies. We got a girl from PA that committed. Her name is Joelle Scott. She's from Northwest High School. Um, she is a hammer dude. And, you know, I think she spent a little bit of time at Wyoming seminary, but I'm super excited for her to come and be an addition to Spire Academy. Um, would love to get Sierra Chiesa. So if you guys, I don't know if you guys know her well enough, but maybe put in a good word, send her on over to Spire Academy. That'd be pretty sweet to put her on the girls team. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited for Vegas. Vegas is going to be a lot of fun. We're bringing a good group good group of guys i think everybody is folks dialed out because everybody that we sent to virginia it didn't it didn't go so hot because the boys were telling me all last week at practice like well if it's my choice i'm going neutral i'm going neutral i'm not going top or bottom it, it, it's just neutral i'm like you guys like you guys are totally ready for freestyle season so right yeah but Vegas uh, is definitely yeah. something that tournament uh it's intense and it's it's all go there's not much waiting around there it's it's you're doing something 24 7 and and uh it's, it's pretty much wrestle from the morning till the night all good matches yeah i'm super excited man so yeah we'll, we'll be able to get you get get some content out there so I'll, we'll probably be seeing you beforehand before you leave for vegas get that practice content and then vegas we could probably all loop it into one little video which would be pretty sweet actually um yeah. You know, did you uh, did you do any did you do any Hodge voting? It, you know, kind of floating back to folk style here. But who who was your pick for Hodge? Yeah, well, for me it was Staraki and, and Paris, and I just feel like Paris has got to be the got to be the choice for me. But you know, I feel like all the guys in contention were worthy of winning that award. But I think Paris is is the guy there. Just just strength the schedule and and you know all all that. And I mean, he went out and he pretty much dominated. So, 
he uh, sitting there for his Big Ten finals match against Kirk. Um, the fifth place match was open, so I was right there watching him in overtime. For one, I think the stall call was a little, a eh, little bit of favoritism, but uh, he persevered and he literally trucked Kurt over, Kirk over, and I've never seen anybody do that. Maybe Gable no. Stevenson, but Mason Paris was a man on a mission. He's the clear front runner, I think, for the Hodge. And like you said, Strachi, uh, Strachi, easily number two, if not, if he doesn't win it. Um, so that that being said, I think also that, yeah, the, the, the list was amazing. Um, you know, Patrick Glory obviously made the list. You make the list for winning the NCAA tournament, I get that. Andrew Alirez, Alirez, man, had an impressive tournament. Stayed home in Colorado, stays home, gets the job done goes on national television and says, you don't have to leave to go to these big schools. You can stay where you're from and get it done. And I thought that meant a lot to some of these kids that are like, Oh, I got to go. I got to go to like, uh, you know, this, this big school that's, you know, 10 hours away or dude, you can stay home. You can stay home. If you got that work ethic, you got the right coaching staff there. Anything is possible. And it's, it's, it's part, part of your mindset yeah, really. I, I mean, good. yeah, that would it. I mean, you can win anywhere. And I know there's a lot of different colleges in the NCAA finals just at, at different weights and stuff. And it was good to see how the fields kind of spread out and how you, know, you can win almost anywhere. Yeah. And then, of course, Pitt, you guys, uh, you guys got Nino Bonacorsi. Bonacorsi gets it done for University of Pittsburgh. How, how's, uh, how's it feel? I mean, uh, you guys are Pitt fans. I know you guys love Pitt. How, Nino Bonacorsi he looked at, I mean, he arguably outside, I think, of uh, Mason Paris and Starachi. I think Nino Bonacorsi he's right up there with those two. For one, he went undefeated, strength of schedule. And he's, he went on, he just, he had such a tough weight class. 197 pounds was loaded. You there, buddy? We're back. There we go. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're I think, back. Okay. So I'm going in and out here. Oh, you're good, dude. You're good. I said, so besides Mason Paris, uh, besides Mason Paris and Strachi, I said, I think my my vote outside of those two, if I had, if I didn't have those two, it would be Nino Bonacorsi all day long. University yeah. of Pitt, undefeated, uh, 197 pounds. It was a stacked weight class. I don't think anybody had a clue of what was going to happen. His strength of schedule was up there with anybody. Pitt does not shy away from competition. They wrestled the best of the best, and the kid went undefeated all year long. And, he, you know, he's an NCAA right. runner-up. Didn't do so well last year, but he comes back this year undefeated and then wins the whole thing. I think he, yeah. he's, got, he's also got to be a front runner. I, I don't think he – I think he kind of got overshadowed, frankly, because of Starachi and Paris. Yeah, I think so too. I, the dude's a hometown hero. He, uh, I saw him the last two days. Um, he was at Dapper Dan. He got recognized there, and uh, he's just such a cool dude. It seems, and and then I saw him today again at, at the kid states, and it was cool. You know, it was in his home college actually, where Pitt wrestles is where they had states today, and, and it was awesome. He's uh, he's just a, he's just a good dude. I've I've had a chance to interview Nino a couple of times. He's an awesome dude. And uh, loves wrestling, loves Pittsburgh. And, I mean, you don't – the coaching staff at Pitt is awesome. Coach Gavin's the man. Quiet guy, but they've got such a great coaching staff. They, they, and like I said, they don't shy away from competition. They do an awesome job there. Right. Um, and, you know, Nino, Nino was one of my favorites. It was hard not to vote for him. I'll be honest. It was hard not to vote for him. And then uh, I also saw at Dapper Dan that uh, Sasso, Sasso was there. Um, you got Sasso's brother, who's going to be going to yep, yep. Uh, Virginia Tech, and Sasso's coming back for another year. Yeah. Real Woods is coming back for another year. So, I, I, I hope, I hope people are ready for another year because I'm ready for for another season of college wrestling, like back to back. Let's go! I, I the the amount of studs coming back is is insane. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. The amount of guys coming back, and one thing that I noticed is the amount of guys that are gone. And I think there's going to be a lot of new studs rising next year and, and guys coming out of nowhere uh, winning, winning big matches, winning titles. So it's going to be fun to see who's who's the next wave. I want I want an and I, I demand an Andonian Haynes rematch. I demand it. I 
demand it. <laughs> that was a great match. It was a great match. I thought, I, I mean, from where I'm watching at home, for one, I'm extremely biased, but I thought Bryce had him pinned. And then, But, you know, it is what it is. Haynes is a great wrestler. Kid's really good. You can't take nothing away from him. The kid is impressive. Um, but I would love to see a rematch between those two all day. Yeah, I love Levi. I was on his uh, world team with him. He's the man. He's just a he's just a good hard nosed wrestler. He he does the basics right. That's what he's really good at. And you know, I think that that really sets him apart. So he's just a stud. And then Donut is super dangerous. He uh, he's pinning dudes from every single position and just creating crazy scrambles. So he's he's awesome to watch. Yeah, I know seventh seventh isn't what he wanted at all. But you know, you figure he missed like near half the year with with injury from his from his from from his foot. And for him to come back and still all American, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I know he's not happy with it, but he'll be back next year. He'll be okay. Um, but right. Levi did Levi did what what people have to do against Andonian, right? You, w- with a wrestler that's dangerous like that, you have to take him off the mat to finish your takedown. You have to. That high crotch that Levi hits, he he lifts everybody. So a guy like Andonian is going to struggle um, unless he catches him early, which is what he did, which was smart. But other than that, you watch Levi. He picked him up, took him down. He lifted him every time he finished those takedowns in Andonian. And on a guy like Bryce, that's how you got to finish on him, unfortunately. So. Right, right. Um, what would, what'd you think of Vito? What'd you think of Vito? I knew when he beat, I knew when he beat Dayton Fix the way he beat him in the semis that RBY was going to have a match, a, a heck of a match on his hand. Yeah. Well, I mean, that weight, first of all, is it's insane. That way is stacked with, with McGee, Fix, RBY, and then Vito. Um, them dudes are, are crazy good. And Vito showed out. I mean, he showed, he showed that he's for real and his speed was crazy. I've never seen him that quick before. And he was on that weekend for sure. And, you know, to put two wins like that together is really impressive. And, you know, he deserves it. So that's awesome. I mean, it's how the, he made – I'm not saying RBY is slow, but Vito made RBY look slower than what he really is. I mean, that's that's hard to do. That's how good right. Vito was. At, Vito was on fire, man. That may be the best I've ever seen him wrestle. And now it's freestyle time, yeah. and we all know yeah. how good he is at freestyle. Right. Yeah, so. I think uh, that's the best I've ever seen him wrestle. And like you said, freestyle is his better sport, he says. So it'll be interesting. You know, so I got one more to- I got one more topic that I want to touch on here before we wrap up. Um, you, uh, you, you and your family know, as, as anybody does, um, when you start to build and, and build some success for yourself or for your company or whatever it may be, it always seems that there are people out there that want to say nasty things that want to, that want to tear you down. They want to bring you down to where they're, they're at. Um, since I, I would say since big tens, I I've experienced it, you know, for sure on Twitter, um, Instagram, things like that. And it's kind of, it's, it's not new to me, but, but it is it, it, this part of my life now uh, being going to be 33. I didn't think that I'd still have to be dealing with things like that. Um, you know, so how does somebody like yourself, how do you, how do you guys deal with, deal with the, you know, I guess you could call them haters, but I mean, honestly, I try not to pay any attention to them, but you know, how do you guys deal with them? Yeah. Uh, well, I try not to even read that stuff. And if I see it, I just, I just get rid of it right away. And, you know, for me, I know that there's probably even more people who, who appreciate what I'm doing or, or like what I'm doing and, and are talking good about me than, than these guys that are talking bad. And, you know, I like to, I like to think that these guys who are talking bad on me, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll do like way more than they ever do. And I'll, and because of their hate, you know, that can motivate me to, to just do greater things and uh, just kind of blow them out of the water type deal. And, you know, for me, it always seems like the guys that are hating are below you. And uh, you never see guys above you hating, you know. And, and so I think it's just we use his motivation. And, uh, again, I, I try to stay away from it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I just, you know, I just wanted to ask that because I know there are other people out there that, you know, they're, they're, they're kids, you know. Um, you know, even at last week's junior high state tournament, there was a kid who may, I think he had been held back. But you got parents yelling from the stands like, Oh, how old is he? 19 and things like that. It's just like, let the kid go out there and wrestle, let him prove it on the mat. Right. 
and and these are like grown these are grown adults saying these things to kids you know like i would rather them say it to me than anything but at the same time i don't want people saying things to me and my family either because you know i've got you know i pretty much share most of my life on social media i I, between me jess harper chase our whole family is involved in this and 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 sometimes it's hard to not engage with somebody that says something nasty about your family you want to rip their head off but I've been I've yeah. been doing a little bit better about, you know, trying to just not engage with that man and try and just move forward. Um, you know, we've got a good thing going and and I think it's 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 best to just keep pushing and moving forward at that. Um, so with that, I think we're going to close. I think it's, you know, I think it was great to catch up again, man. I'm glad we were able to you know, get number 6 in. It's been a while. I you know, we we were on a roll there for a minute and then just Boom. And, you know, big tens happened and it was just one thing after the next. We've been super busy. Um, We kind of touched over everything. I think NCAAs, big tens, Dapper Dan, you signing with Rudis, um, you know, some of the uh, featured matchups at NCAAs, you know, your plans for Vegas. I think we touched over a lot of good stuff. And uh, I think, folks, you guys got to stay tuned over the next couple of weeks. We're going to find our way when Bo and them are back from Atlanta. Uh, Jess Bloggs and myself, we will be out in Johnstown covering some practices. Hopefully the whole gang is there and uh, we're going to get some good content before Fire and myself head out to Vegas to watch these guys compete and for my guys to compete. So uh, until next time, guys, go check out Cauliflower Combat merch. Drew Bloggs is the code. Bo, you got anything else for anybody? No, I appreciate it. I'm really excited for for the next month. It's going to be fun. A lot of a lot of big times coming, big weekends, and and uh, you know we're excited for it.